Hello, welcome to Straw Family Farm Take 2. I'm Christy Jay. In the chapel, we have Daniel 10, 19. Don't be afraid, he said, for you are very precious to God. Peace, be couraged, be strong. So just looking to be strong. Um, the boss is away at work. And for some reason, there are a couple of employees that think that when she's not there, they get to nitpick at me and order me around and uh, just dissect my words to a point of running me down. So it's been a rough week. Um, I don't have anything to show you craft wise, but I do have one thing to tell you about. Um, it's not that I haven't done anything. It's just I don't have anything to show you. So, um, last week I podcast, worked the rest of the week out. Saturday, roommate and I spent the day out on the lake. Uh, and I have a funny story about that if y'all want to hear. It was hilarious. So, roommate is playing with the electronics on the boat. I decide I'm literally sitting over the edge of the boat with my feet in the water. I've taken my shoes off, um, gone into what we call hillbilly mode, uh, got my pants pulled up. You know, I didn't want to get sunburned, so I didn't want to wear shorts. I pulled my pants up. My legs are very white. Um, and I've got me a pole, and I'm splashing my feet in the water, and I'm just casting out, reeling in. I've got a little spinner jig on. And so for the longest time, I didn't catch a fish. But finally... Something was on my hook. So I reel it in and there's this little bitty perch and I, you can see it's uh, green markings. It was actually really pale and then it's got the black dot. So it's a little bitty perch. It's not this big. It is so little that the hook didn't even fit in its mouth. It's holding on to the little rubber tip of the little rubber worm that's on my spinner. And he's got it in his mouth like a dog would have a toy. And the only thing holding this fish on is himself. All he's got to do is open his mouth, let go. Um, and I, I, I know in my heart of hearts, the way the week has gone, there's a lesson in that thing. I, I don't know what it is, but I will figure it out. There is a lesson in that little fish, um, little dinky thing. I started giggling. Roommate started laughing. I mean, honestly, it was, it's a little bitty. I caught bait is what we were saying. And so I get about halfway to the boat, you know, it's out of the water. And I, I think, well, I need to take it off and throw it back, but it's not letting go. And I thought, okay. So I start to maneuver my, the other end of my pole over to the boat to get the fish off. And he finally opened his mouth and swam fell back in the water and swam away. And I just laughed. I thought, how many times do we do things to ourselves? You know, there's a lesson in that little fish. Don't know what it is, but there is a lesson there. So, um, yeah, all we got to do is just let go. Anyway, so uh, I caught two more fish. But the funny part is, is that I caught the first one. Roommate removed it because I just kind of swung over and said, look, it was too little. Roommate took it off the hook, threw it back in the water, and I cast right back out. And here it come again with another little one. Roommate said it was the same daggum fish playing with me. Like it would get off the hook, go back, get off the hook. And roommate goes, there's a cartoon in there somewhere. Okay, because... There is no way. And it was just too funny. So I caught three little fish. None of them worth keeping. They were just a little perch. They were so cute. I had a piece of driftwood. Just a little piece of driftwood. I kept it just because I'm me. It's at my desk. So that was Saturday. Saturday night, the storms rolled in. There were major storms all across the country. Our day was traveling in them. I was up from midnight to about three in the morning when they left the state, when they rolled on out. RJ got home safe. He was on the phone with me. He pulled over in a little, um, a, 
uh, uh, gas station. It, he said it didn't have an awning, but he could pull close enough to the building to kind of get a windbreak for the horses. And this storm just blew over him uh, to a point where there are videos out there of a fire truck trying to respond to a house fire. And this happened just down the road in Tulsa. They're stopped. And it literally looks like from the video when they're video and what's going on outside, it looks like they're racing 90 miles an hour down the street and they're stationary. There was 100 mile an hour winds with this storm. On the upside, now it, it does a mom's heart horribly because he was traveling. I was on the phone to him. He was watching the radar, driving. I was telling him, okay, they're saying it's here. I'm looking at this weather and we make a good team and um, it, it was fine. He made it through, got home. When he got home, had a couple of limbs down at the farm and nothing major. So last storm tore everything apart. Apparently we put it together pretty good and it's staying together. <laughs> so, um, yeah, uh, here at this house, I didn't get a whole lot. Um, I laughed and said the trees just kind of threw up in the yard. You know, you have those little clusters of leaves everywhere. A couple of sticks, which roommate and I had discussed how we were going to get these dead sticks out of the tree because they thought we felt they were unsafe. Well, God did that for us. He just blew them right out. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, Sunday was roommate went to roommate's mom's and um, take care of some down leaves there and some uh, sticks, you know, just little stuff like that. I cleaned up around here. Um, I had to get some stuff together that I was working on because Monday I was off and I took my daughter. I, I got the new serger. I had two sewing machines. I only have room in the tiny house for storage for two sewing machines. And I think I've talked about this before. So I have my old brother that everybody thinks is pathetic, but I love it. It's metal parts. It has one part that needs to be replaced, but I can actually work it without it. So I don't worry about it. And then I've got the new serger. And if you remember, I bought the serger with the metal inner works. Um, I want these things to last. So I had a cheap backup um, sewing machine that I used with our interns and taught them to sew and they made stuff. And uh, I gave that because I don't have any place to store it. I gave that along with I went through my material stuff and realistically cut down a lot of my material. Um, the big... Uh, I have, I have gotten to a point where I only use black, white, clear threads with my machine and I don't match every color. I, I don't do formal sewing anymore. Okay. So anything I do that's for me, I just use the standard tan, black, brown, white. I, I don't do a whole lot of color. Now I did buy colors with the serger. So if I wanted to spin off a bobbin or sew off of that thread, I could, but that meant I didn't need my thread rack with all the 50 some colors. So I sorted down my sewing box. It's old. It's broke. The handle isn't there anymore, but it has enough storage for spools of thread for what I use for the sewing machine. And then I got that new lovely box, which has my serger thread in it, which again, can act as my colored thread for the sewing if I want to. Uh, so I sent her stuff like that. Pins. Um, I'm trying to think of what all I took. Uh, the plastic bobbins. I took the extra bobbins. It, they would work with my machine, but I have metal for my machine. I have the old metal and I like the metal bobbins and the plastic ones went with the plastic sewing machine. So, yeah. Uh, Anyway, I took her the sewing machine, a whole box of things that you need to sew. Uh, then I took two big old bags of stuff. Some of it was tablecloths and curtains and that that she's going to try and use throughout her house. And I told her, I said, if you don't use them throughout your house, look at everything as if it's material. Because you can cut up a set of curtains or a sheet or, you know, these tablecloths. 
and they can actually become other things. So, um, yeah, she managed to get, she's got one room full of curtains and she's like, Oh my gosh. So that, that and the material. So I took all that stuff to her Sunday or Monday, helped her learn to thread the bobbin, uh, how to wind the bobbin, thread the bobbin, thread the needle down and stitch straight stitch. That, that's all I did. And I taught her that real quick on the fly, I told her to YouTube everything. So, um, by that evening, she was pretty proud of her straight stitches. She was playing and having fun. So hopefully I created another sewer. Um, she never was one for knitting or crocheting. So hopefully she'll sew. Then I went on up to RJ. I took care of some paperwork with him, checked on him. Him and I had breakfast. I stopped at the donut shop and got strawberry milk for him and donuts like when he was little. And got up to the farm and he's like, donut. <laughs> he's just like a little kid still. Um, so we spent a little bit of time together, had some things that we had to get done. And then I headed back. I got my car tagged. On Sunday or on Monday, I did all of my running. Like I did the grocery shopping, got my car tagged. Um, I helped roommate. Now, here's the thing is the new boat has a Garmin fish locator system on it. We had always had Laurent and switching over was trying. Um, they have anti-theft devices and all this stuff. And we bought the boat used and turns out I, and it, I actually ended up calling Garmin and meeting with this lovely lady, Sherry. Couldn't, I can't say enough about her. She walked me step by step by step. Number one, I proved that we had bought the boat and that we had it tagged in our name. Then I had, she had to clear out all previous registrations. The boat itself has gone through about four owners. Um, the Garmin Electronics, each piece, um, there is a live scope, a transducer, a earth maps, echo maps, and then world maps, I think. Anyway, there's four parts to the system and all four were registered to four different people. So she got all of that cleared out. Then she told me how to get the system update. I was back and forth on the phone with them. She's very nice. Can't say enough about Garmin and their customer service and helping with all of that. Hold on just a second. Okay, sorry about that. Literally work has my stomach tied in knots and I've had to run to the restroom. And yeah, anyway, so where was I? Um, my Monday. So I got all the running done. Uh, roommate and I are looking into getting a boat pass. It costs $5 just to go and launch off the boat docks. But if you get a annual pass, um, it's only $40 and then you can use them whenever you want. So I tried getting that done Monday, just everything and anything that, that required me running. Uh, so I did that, had a really good day Monday, then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, today is Friday morning, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, it was back to the grind. I literally come home mentally exhausted, physically exhausted. My shoulders carry so much tension from work that. I really haven't done anything. Now I did since I had to go take a potty break anyway. I ran into the other room and got the crochet that I've been working on. And you've seen this before. I put it down a while back and when I got the serger and started playing with all the sewing. Um, so here's where I'm at. So I have all the gray done. And I think I had that done when so I have this part, which is the fold up, fold over part. And I have that part done. Um, because it's reversible, you have to do everything. So I have the gray strap, crossbody strap done. And I finished the green looking crossbody strap. So I have that done. And then I started on uh, the Oh, I've lost my spot. Oh my god. Here we go. 
I literally have one row done of the cross body teal to make it reversible. So, and I haven't even gotten to the end of the row. That's literally my chain. Um, I just have, I've used one skein of this and I still have two more to go. Um, so, and I ended up with this much gray left, which close to almost a skein, but maybe not. Um, it's got some gone out of it. So I'm guessing that I probably will end up with almost a full skein of the teal left too. Um, so every night I have been just working on this and after I get this piece made, the only other thing left to make is the little pocket piece. Um, see here. I'm trying to, yeah, uh, the small front pocket is the only thing that I have to do after that. So I've got two pieces left to make, then basically stitch it all together. So yeah, I have taken, honestly, I haven't gotten that far uh, because everything that I'm doing is straight repetition. Um, but I'm getting further on it and I just need something mindless. My shoulders are killing me because I carry strap, uh, stress in them. My tummy, as you've seen, is all upset. <laughs> and it's just stress. It is people nitpicking at me constantly eight hours a day. So, but it is Friday. I am late recording and I will get this posted. So hopefully I'll get back on track next week. This weekend, I think if it doesn't storm, we're going back out on the boat for one day. So I don't know if I will get any um, projects done. And I don't take any crochet or knit or anything out on the boat. Okay, we pack a cooler. We pack it with water and then flavors just in case we get tired of water. And... Um, go out there and just have fun. Okay. Um, it's very relaxing. The time goes by too fast. It really does. Um, we were out there from eight 30 in the morning till two and it seemed like we were only out there an hour. If that, so yeah, I lose all track of time out there, but it's amazing. It's awesome. So I will let you guys off of here. Hopefully I will be a little more crafty and actually have something to show you. Maybe get that done. Um, get back to sewing. Just, I, I need to relieve stress at this point. <laughs> so, um, the lake is doing that for me. But I hope that you guys are being safe with all the storms, that nobody got any storm damage. Um, we didn't, we haven't even lost power at either house. So, that's a good thing the farm and here both have power. Um, <clears throat> the farm did lose power while the storm was going through, but we only know this because when RJ finally got to the house, um, he said all the clocks were flashing. But other than that, he has not lost power at all. So, and I, it didn't even flash here. So we're good. All right. You guys saying prayers for you that you're safe and I will talk to y'all later. Have a great week. Bye.